Broadway's favorite Cinderella and Princess Party host Laura Osnes is keeping things royal with her newest project, One Royal Holiday, set to premiere tomorrow on Hallmark. We spoke with her about the filming process, her Halloween plans, and more. All right, so we have Laura here today. And Laura, you know, we've seen you in Bandstand, Cinderella, uh, Grease, you name it. <laughs> you lost about that. And now here you are on One Royal Holiday. Talk to us a little bit about what we can expect. Hi, Charlie. Thank you for having me. Hi, everybody. Hi, Bravo.com. Um, okay, so I got to film this really sweet Hallmark movie, and um, it's called One Royal Holiday, and I play um, a, a young nurse named Anna who is headed to her dad's inn for the holidays. Uh, but not before she runs into um, a mother and son found stranded uh, because of the impending storm. Their flight is canceled. And she, being like the helpful, sweet person that she is, she's like, oh my gosh, she overhears the conversation and invites them to her dad's inn. Um, they, of course, go along for the ride and spend the week leading up to Christmas because of all of the weather disasters that force them to stay there. I, I missed the point where she finds out that, of course, he is royalty and she is the queen of Gawick in Europe. And so, um, yeah, she's afraid it's not going to, you know, they kind of have everything for each other. But she is very close off to love. She's been burned by love in the past. So she, it's not really something she's looking for. And um, he has his own. He's very kind of pretentious and stuffy and close minded. And um, throughout the week, they end up kind of softening each other's hearts a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, totally. I think what's super cool is the fact that right now Broadway is dark, but you were able to land a gig despite all of that. What does that feel like for you? I d it was a complete miracle. I mean, in all honesty, I was so shocked and grateful to get the call. Um, I'm so happy that Hallmark was one of the first networks to figure out how to continue production in the midst of a pandemic. Um, and there are five fellow Broadway stars and artists in this movie. So I feel like they really took yeah. advantage of Broadway being shut down and got um, a lot of New York talent. And the, the movie filmed in Connecticut in July and the whole cast and crew was quarantined together on set at the yeah. inn where we shot the movie. What? So it was, it was kind of art imitating life in that way. It felt like Hallmark's like Christmas in July summer camp, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What was that like to be like in the presence of other talent that does similar things to what you do and like were you guys around the end kind of like singing all the time or what like what was oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes there was a lot of Broadway conversation and um it was uh, it was such a joy it actually you know there was an immediate kind of comfort level I got to reunite with Victoria Clark who was in Cinderella with me on Broadway she played my fairy godmother and she plays the queen rightly so in this film and um getting to star opposite Aaron to date was you know something I've wanted to do for a long time I've known Aaron for a long time we've done concerts and things together but have never done a full project and I was just elated to find out that you know he was cast as as my co-star um and then Crystal Joy Brown is currently starring in Hamilton on Broadway she plays my best friend and Tom McGowan, who has been a wizard in Wicked, he plays my dad. Um, so it's like, it, there's a whole slew of us. And yes, it was very dr dramatic um, in the best way. I mean, dramatic in a, in a good way. Um, and yeah, we were singing, our characters sing Christmas carols in the movie, but we were trying our best to be very pedestrian, very pedestrian with our, our vocals. <laughs> what's, what's it like? Like, what's the difference for you when it comes to um, working on Broadway versus for TV, I imagine that there are some differences there. Absolutely, I'm kind of new to the TV film world and it's Hallmark has been a really lovely place to learn and grow. And I feel like I still have a, a lot to learn, but um, it's the main difference for me is that you don't get rehearsal. Like you, huh. <laughs> you it, on Broadway, we have like a month and a half of rehearsal to get to know everybody, to figure out subtext, to work on the whole, you know, the the flow of the piece from beginning to end and it's a very safe space to fail and before anyone ever sees it or before anyone ever reviews it and with tv film it's like you wake up that morning you kind of memorize the sides probably that day in the makeup chair because they changed from the night before and uh you know you get three takes and, and you move on and it's a little um it was scary. It was scary at first and I'm still learning to get comfortable with that but it's also really fun it's a different skill to just kind of trust your instincts and fly by the seat of your pants and everything feels very fresh. Um, you know, you, you're not, you're never in anything long enough to let it get kind of 
mundane. Um, not that Broadway's ever mundane for me. I love that, but it's, it's just, it's a completely different skill and just learning to kind of trust your instincts and, um, and, and just go, just go for it because you don't get that time to like really rehearse or think about it. You kind of have to be your own director in that way or talk mm. with your scene partners about, about what you want to do with the scene. Cause the director's job in a, in, in TV film, and especially with the Hallmark thing, because we shoot a whole movie in 15 days. You know, obviously there are probably other TV projects or film projects where you do get rehearsal or you do get more time. Um, but the director's job on this is basically to make sure the camera angles look great and everyone is where they're supposed to be as opposed to really working on the piece. So what's it like over the 15 days with you guys together? Do you guys end up feeling like family over the course of time since you're spending so much time together? Absolutely, especially in this case because we were quarantined together. We we literally lived together for for four weeks. It felt like we were doing a show out of town, <laughs> yeah. um, and and especially in the midst of the pandemic, um, I think we were all just so grateful and so appreciative for the opportunity to work and to get to be around other people. Just the stimulation, both creatively and also just human to human um, to have to have other people since we had all been you know quarantined and we got tested we got COVID tested a couple times every week and our temperatures tested every morning and they I was I just again felt so grateful that they were taking precautions to ensure everybody's safety and make sure that we were doing things um you know correctly and to the best of our knowledge at the time and we we survived the four weeks with zero COVID cases and I think doing something like that does really bond a group for sure. <laughs> We've seen you in Cinderella you of course um, do Broadway princess parties so we're used to seeing you be a princess and I don't want to give any spoilers away but I know at the end of this film you kind of occupy that role again. Do you seek out these roles or do people just naturally see you as a princess and are like you know we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to have her take this role. <laughs> well, I I felt so honored. Um, I I don't know. I think you know. I think Cinderella has become. It was kind of a moment for me in my career, and I do feel like a lot of people see me that way. Um, but the joy of being an actress is getting to also play different roles. Like I'm like yeah. Bandstand was completely different from that. Bonnie was completely different from that. But um, I I'm happy to wear the tiara proudly. And in this movie. Um, I actually kind of, Anna's a little more kind of like sassy and bold than Laura is. Oh, yeah. So I had to kind of access that side of me and then turn into, you know, the, 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 the princess type, I guess her heart is softened later, later in the movie. And there's a very kind of, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a very Cinderella moment at the end of the movie. But, um, Hey, I don't mind falling in love with princes. Like I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> kind of silly question. If you uh, had to play one princess for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Oh my gosh. I know. No problem. Wow. <laughs> That's, oh. I mean, part, I mean, my heart is like, well, Cinderella, because I already got to set foot into those glass slippers. I'm just, right. I, my heart is connected to her. But I, you know, I, if they were making a Broadway musical of Tangled, like I would love to do that. I think mm. that would be so fun. I love the music. I love that movie. I think Belle would be like a beautiful kind of natural fit. I would love to play that role before I die, before I get too old. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, if I, if it was one for the rest of my life, like, is that like where the princess ends up? Like, okay. The, like Belle now lives in a castle with the human form of the beast. Like that sounds fine. I, right. I, could, I could get down with that. <laughs> So I have to ask, with Halloween coming up, are you taking advantage of Halloween? Is Halloween one of your favorite holidays? And, okay, so I know you did a killer party. Do you plan on dressing as a clown, a princess, or something else? Great question. Um, I do. Did I keep that clown stuff? I, I don't think I kept it. I was like, maybe I'll need this again. Um, let's see. I, I definitely, I think my very first Halloween that I remember, I, I was a princess. My mom sewed me, like, a pink dress. I was oh, generic. Cute. I was a generic <laughs> pink princess. Um, I think this year, I mean, the movie airs on Halloween. So I'll, I, I don't think I will be dressing up. Let's see. I'll probably like wear my pajamas and I think okay. I'll maybe be like a slumber party girl. <laughs> Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Uh, it's going to be now. And I think it's, I think a lot of people might be, might be vibing with slumber party girl or guy this Halloween. <laughs> 
exactly. You've kind of taken advantage of obviously Broadway, obviously TV, but also just the virtual scene as well with a killer party and also with your Broadway princess parties. Can you kind of talk about that and like being versatile in that way? Oh, well, thanks for saying that. I feel like we've all just had to kind of pivot and figure out how to move forward as artists uh, during this time. And yeah, I'm super grateful. There's been some cool virtual opportunities to to continue doing what we all love to do. Um, I guess I think it's just continuing to to think ahead of the curve, I guess. Um, mm. My friend Jason Howland is the one that wrote A Killer Party. And I was actually, he was the music director on Bonnie and Clyde. He's a dear friend of mine. Wow. He's an absolutely brilliant musician um, and composer himself. And he actually, I was one of his first phone calls. And he was like, I have this idea. If I did it, would you be on board? And I was like, absolutely. And I actually got to be like a co-producer credit on no A Killer way. Party. Um, yeah, way at the end of the credits, awesome. I, I got to help co-produce it. So um even just creatively and kind of coming on board with brainstorming about it, the whole thing. So I've been excited to kind of, um, to kind of do that. I think it's been a combination of me seeking out opportunities as well as some opportunities coming my way, which I'm so grateful for. I've been hosting this um, series with Rogers and Hammerstein um, and doing kind of contemporary versions of, you know, some of their classic songs and doing a web series on that every couple of weeks. Um, and then, yeah, this killer party musical, which was so cool and such a cool learning opportunity um, yeah. to, to like film. I had to be like my own lighting designer, like makeup designer, uh, you know, camera person. And yeah, I learned, great. we all, yeah, we all learned a lot doing that, which was really cool. And I feel like we're still, we're still learning. I'm starting to teach a lot um, and doing a lot of uh, virtual coaching and, and things like yeah. that. So um I don't know. I miss Broadway more than anything. And I miss uh, singing and doing things live. I think we all do. But I think it's been necessary for us to begin to get creative with other ways to continue to stay artistic and bring joy and light into the world. So Laura, a lot of artists working together and essentially supporting each other. Talk to us about how people can support you guys right now. Ah, well, thank you. Yes. You know, a lot of um, people are giving to the Actors Fund right now, which is a wonderful organization helping out of work actors. Um, but also, we're, you know, we're being asked to perform for a lot of those things for free and give to good causes. But also, this is our livelihood. So I would encourage people to if there are virtual things that you can buy tickets for that money comes back to us. Um, you know, I, I am an actor. I, you know, I'm going to be the one calling the Actors Fund. So as much as we want to give, as, as actors want to give their time to organizations like that, we're also the ones in need. So like with A Killer Party, for example, you were talking about that, you know, you can pay $12.99 to buy nine episodes. It's the fraction of a cost of a Broadway musical and you're getting a full right. virtual musical you can watch from your home. Um, even with a Broadway Princess Party, partnering with Airbnb, as you also mentioned, we did two virtual concerts a couple weekends ago and you could buy tickets to it and all of that money actually comes back to us and helps support us. So if there are opportunities to buy tickets to something that an artist is doing, that is, I think, the best way to personally support the artists you love. Uh, it's funny. So I know that you've been doing a lot. Is there a particular realm that you enjoy doing a little bit more than the other? I know they're all very different. Yeah, no, they are. And, uh, you know, I think bra I think musical theater will always be my home. I feel yeah. like that's what I was put on the planet to do. And that's been my life goal since I was five years old. Now starting to branch into the TV film thing, which I was very, which I was kind of intimidated by for a while, I have to be honest, mm -hmm. um, and didn't really have much favor in. I've auditioned for TV film my whole life, and I've only just kind of started getting my foot in the door um, mm -hmm. in, into that world a little bit. So I'm gaining my confidence in that. And, um, and I have grown to love it. I have to be honest. It's a lot easier <laughs> than Broadway. Um, it, but it's still taxing. There are long days and early mornings. It's very, it's a very different art form, as you said. Um, but I feel like my heart will always be on the stage. Talk about that. The whole, it's a lot easier. What, what about it is easier? Cause it sounds challenging. I know you said you don't really get rehearsals. That sounds yeah. hard. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard. It's a whole different thing, but I think in general, it's less taxing. Like when you're in a Broadway show, your life revolves around your health and your, you know, vocal stamina and your social life suffers so much because you are working when everyone else is free. You know, we work at nights and weekends and at least with TV film, like it's 
you get the weekends off. <laughs> like you feel a little bit like a normal person most of the time. Um, there was a whole week during one royal holiday where we had night shoots for five days in a row. And that was weird. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, you can't predict that. And your body definitely goes, why am I working at four in the morning? <laughs> um, but it's also kind of fun. And like you said, it's like, you know, it's a slumber party where you're not sleeping. You're, yeah, you, it's definitely a bonding experience going five nights in a row <laughs> and seeing seeing each other at their at their best and worst at 4 a.m. Um, yeah is it weird it's, performing without that live audience yeah you know it that's also something you just get used to um and it's like okay this is a this is a different element we still get to play with each other to be honest like it is still fun to be in a scene with somebody you know looking them in the yeah. eye and being present and and getting to play and, and act, whether I, I always love just continuing to play, even if like the camera's not on me, you know, I've, I've heard some, because I'm starting to branch into this, some actors who they've worked with people who are like, Oh, when, when it's the camera's not on them, they just kind of like phone it in. I'm like, no, I like continue to love to play. I'm like, I will be here for you. I will be present. And I will continue to play with you when the camera's on you. Like, I just think it's, it's so fun. I love what I do. And it's like, why not take the opportunity to continue to to give and and be playful but yeah not having uh, like a live audience there's especially because like we're ca like we did christmas carols and there are moments where it's like you don't get applause and it is something that we're used to but even starting to do virtual concerts like we don't get applause and it's weird it's like you finish a song you're belting and you're like silence I and like, for it. <laughs> okay that on to the next like it definitely takes some getting used to but what's cool about you know one about these Hallmark movies too and about TV film in general is that you now have a lasting motion picture of your experience which is so cool like that I you know I'm I'm a nostalgic photo person I take lots of pictures I like reminiscing and all of that and like on Broadway we don't usually get that um you know, a full video of the experience of, of creating right. it. And so that is what I love about TV film too, about like, oh, we have a movie to commemorate our experience and our, and our time together. Right, totally. So why should people stay home with their families and just check out one royal holiday? It's such a sweet film. It's definitely going to make you smile, hopefully going to make you laugh, and also hopefully going to make you cry. And especially if you're a Broadway fan, you're going to be seeing all your Broadway favorites in this in this movie. Um, Aaron and I also got to record a song um, for the opening credits, so you'll even get to hear us sing a little bit if that's you know what you love. But it's it's very heartwarming, um, just holiday happy, joyful escape that will hopefully make you smile and put you in in good spirits. And hey, it's it's going to kind of like ring in the Christmas season. <laughs> Right. It's, like it's, it's never too early for that. Right. <laughs>